previously on Balls. Yeah, yeah. Hello, John speaking. Hey, John, how's it going? It's the Balls Radio crew. How are you doing today? Hello, Mitch. Hi, hi Darren. Hey, guys. Yeah, okay. very all very good, thanks. Belated Happy New Year. I don't think we had a chance to chat to you since uh, we've wrapped up at the end of last year. Hope you had a nice holiday period. Thank you, Greg. And, uh, and back, in, uh, back in full fray with the Super Rugby underway. You know, no, I got through the uh, the UK consultancy. That was a bit cold for me, so uh, <laughs> must be back in South Africa. Yeah. Yes. All right, so uh, back in SA and uh, see, you, see you back on Super Sport again, which is great to see you. And already Super Rugby underway. Thanks, um, uh, the, the one thing I want to ask you about, and maybe you can put in perspective for us, no one got it right, uh, very few other than a couple of diehard King supporters. Some people saying wouldn't win a game this year. Get out of the stalls, first game, pull off a win against the Force. Do we see that as maybe a king side that we're underestimating grossly, or are the force just like one of those sides that just are, are basically going to finish where they've started the season at the bottom of the log? Yeah, I mean, first you've got to congratulate the Kings on uh, you know, getting a result in their in their first performance. You know, uh, a newish side um, coming together. It's not it's not easy. So you know, look, they've um, dealt with the first performance. Uh, Really well, you know the force. Uh, unfortunately, you know losing, you know Connor Pocock and Sharp. Um, they do not possess many Test players. I think they got Cummins, uh, Nick Cummins on the right wing, um, but certainly they're quite an inexperienced uh, super side. And uh, I actually have uh, uh, great concerns about their future in mm. in, in Australia going forward, uh, with most of the rugby being on eastern states and and certainly the uh, the lack of foundations I guess that uh, can supply to such a team. So, yeah, no, I think um, the force is certainly going to be uh, one of those teams that's going to be looking after the bottom. Um, it's important now for the Kings to uh, to build on that performance. Well, they've got a tough one. I mean, they have a break now. Do you think it's a good thing for them or a bad, bad thing that they've got a, a break one week after they start? They pick up a little bit of momentum with a win, and now they've got a, a bye week before they've got the Sharks the following week. Yeah, well, first rounds don't really give you a, a, a total indication of, of what's to come. And uh, I think the the Kings would be pretty happy to take a bye most weeks if they if they could get it or every second week because <laughs> uh, you know injuries is going to injuries are going to play a big part in this competition and uh, right. that's certainly a side that can't afford to lose five injuries. You know that's when you know how they deal with their uh, their tough times when um, when they possibly can't get out the the best mix is going to be the you know the the sign that'll let us know uh, you know about the character of of this group because you know the best sides in the and the comp, and certainly the ones that possess most of the Tri Nations test players, are the ones that yeah. can uh, can sustain five injuries. Uh, you know, amongst the squad, not necessarily the best players, but certainly spread out through the squad. Yeah, just having a look at the first uh, first few uh, blows that have been thrown in this competition, and uh, you know, just o- as an overview, uh, it seems like the New Zealand sides are once again showing they're going to be uh, one of their sides are going to be the ones to beat. I mean, particularly that Chiefs Highlanders game. Uh, Definitely above all other games this weekend was the one to watch. It was a, such a great game. Um, I mean, do you do you kind of echo that? Do you think that's that's where the uh, the likely winner should come from, New Zealand, based on the kind of rugby they're playing in the form and the makeup of their teams? Uh, I think whoever whoever wins the um, wins the you know the log is generally pretty home and hose in this competition with the amount of travel that has to be you know, done across. Mm. Uh, the Indian Ocean and that, but, but at the end of the day, I think the New Zealand conference probably one of the strongest I've seen. Normally, you know, you see two sides in New Zealand, basically, you know, Crusaders Hurricanes, or you know, in the last year, Crusaders Chiefs, uh, and then you've, at times you've seen Crusaders Blues. But there's actually five very yeah. good sides yeah. in this competition. I just don't know how they do it. You know, those the wingers that they popped up for uh, for Auckland and Halau and the fullback. Uh, Piatel, you know, they're huge men. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, the, the Chiefs Hollanders match, um, what a superb example of, of attacking rugby, even though that both teams can improve defensively. But, mm. you know, the Chiefs, for my, for my liking, tend to explore the defender right to the end, uh, and, uh, concentrate on keeping the ball alive, um, r- realizing that they, if they have to deal with contact, they will deal with contact, but ultimately, at the end of the day, they try and manipulate that one on one to its fullest potential before actually going into into contact and falling to the ground. And I think that's 
a kind of a point of difference for them. So uh, a better defensive side will ask questions of that, mm. um, but certainly they're going to look to manipulate the defender in, in this 2013 competition. And from the South African side's point of view, uh, did anyone show anything in this first week uh, yet, or was it still too early to tell us to, uh, who, the, who the biggest threat from South Africa is going to be? Yeah, I thought the balls um, uh, scrum really well, set piece really well, and you, you saw a lot of their traditional strength and what they trust, uh, but they're also you know, willing to, to move the ball from turnover situations. I think the Stormers um, have got to get their attack right. I think they were far too deep um, and never really um, asked questions and got on the gain line. You know, with people like Bill Mullen and Elstad and that, you know, they were far too wide and too far away from, uh, from the contact to get momentum. And, and their set piece broke down, which surprised me. I thought they'd probably be stronger at scrum time, but yeah. they'll certainly be a, be it will have better attitude going into the next performance. And the Sharks, you know, move move the ball nicely. They've got good continuity, um, and they uh, obviously had to, you know, got a good lead on the on the cheetahs. And the cheetahs again, sort of, um, you know, demonstrated that you, they keep everything alive and they fight right to the end. Mm. So um, um, I think uh, the Sharks were pretty happy to, you know, to, to finally get the result. You know, when the legs just about went uh, in the last few minutes uh, on that performance. But yeah, like it's, it's only round one, and and some of these teams have planned pre seasons around not having too much, too much game time. So a couple of teams are probably short of, you know, one or two games here. But uh, knowing what uh, what's coming, they'll get stronger and stronger each week. All right, well, there we go. Early stages in the uh, Super Rugby. We appreciate your time, just John. Just a question yeah, quickly for, for, uh, for John. Uh, your thoughts on, on the Crusaders relieving Dan Carter of the vice-captaincy? A, a good move or not? Yeah, well, it's interesting. They've, um, they've communicated that they've uh, uh, done a lot of research and, and uh, they've come up with a new attacking framework and strategy for, for this competition. So I'm looking forward to that being exposed. And uh, clearly, they've obviously looked at their leadership, and uh, maybe just want to take a little bit of pressure off them and, and get them to concentrate on driving the game. He's a he's a um, he's a very humble lad, and and he doesn't like too much uh, too much to do except get on with uh, what I guess he possesses uh, um, in terms of uh, his ability to go to any attacking area of space. You know, like he has a phenomenal ability to see beyond the line. So maybe they just want to take a take take the off-field responsibilities on them and, and get a, a greater reward on-field. So uh, it's interesting to see what uh, what happens. I wouldn't read too much into that. Yeah. Just yeah. finally, uh, John, I mean, would you care to venture at this early stage uh, someone you think will be a winner of this competition when we get to, <laughs> by looking at the fixtures as it looks like two years' time, but <laughs> when we get to the end of Super Rugby finally, uh, who do you see as coming out as the winning team? Well, so you saw contrasting styles. You saw the um, you know the Ch- the Chiefs and the Hollanders um, sort of playing a wonderful mm. sort of uh, keeping the ball alive and and manipulating the defender and exploring exactly everything before before going to to ground or or, sh- or shoulder into them and then you had the the Brumby style of football that's very suffocating uh, it's got great line speed and they have attacking kicks in their uh, in their attack and their forwards work very hard off nine and then you've got a you know, a mixture in South Africa of, of the Sharks moving the ball and the, and the, the you know, the ball being very, very precise and, um, and on territory and, uh, and pressure. So, yeah, for, for my liking, you know, like uh, at this point in time, you sort of see Sharks, um, Brumbies and... Um, Chiefs. You know, New Zealand, I, I really wouldn't... Uh, yeah, it could be any one of the five. The You've got the Crusaders, and you've got um, and you've got the Blues. Yeah, you know? the Blues are. Uh, but the, what will hit the Blues is uh, is injuries when they have to go to their depth. Whereas yeah. I think the Chiefs and the Crusaders can uh, handle that the injuries a little bit more. All right, fascinating. The thoughts of uh, John Mitchell. Thanks a lot for your time, John. Have a great evening, and uh, look forward to chatting to you again sometime in the future. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Darren. All the best, cheers, cheers man. Bye bye. All right, John. John Mitchell joining us on Balls Visual Radio this afternoon. Ah, huh, nice for you, eh? He agreed with you. Brumbies. <laughs> yeah, not the first one. Brumbies will win the Australian Conference. I have no, no doubts of that whatsoever. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, no, no, for sure, sure Darren. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, Darren. Yeah, they win it, but will they go and win the competition? Uh, Brumbies will win the Australian Conference. I have no doubts about that. Uh, this is Balls Visual Radio. Darren, Simon, Kate and John. Weekdays from 3pm to 6pm Central African Time.
bulls.co.za.